So God, uh, God put us together. You know, he's with me every day. All we do is talk about the word, the Bible, you know. He, uh, and he's met the Lord. You know, uh, you know when somebody, because he's in love with him, right? And so that's a, uh, that's how you know. So let's pray, and then I'm going to give it over to him. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, you, Lord, you are amazing. Lord, today, Father, um, Lord, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word, Father. We thank you for what you're still doing in, in, in our lives, Lord. I mean, changing us, pulling us from the darkest depths of hell, Lord, and, and, uh, and just transforming us, Father. So, Lord, we invite your spirit and your presence to be with us, Lord. Father, just... Uh, I ask that you would open our ears, Father, and our hearts. And um, Lord, we just give it to you. Father, it's all about you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Nick. What? <laughs> um... First, I, I would like to just say that, uh-oh, uh, I'll hold it. How about that? That's better? All right. Well, I want to say that when I met the Lord, he just absolutely, uh, man, he just, he crushed me. He, I mean, he ripped me all the way. He shredded my insides and he ripped me, uh, you know, he just, he opened himself up to me and it's just, it's something that I had never experienced or I'd never felt before <clears throat> and the, the absolute power that he he placed on on, on me and in, in my life is just amazing and it uh it, it consumed me and overwhelmed over overwhelmed me and he put a calling on me <clears throat> and I can't I can't uh you know there's no more running for me you know, I had to face. I had to face him, and it was just a, a very uh, amazing experience for me. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go back and just kind of touch base on a couple things, and you know how how you know he's been there my entire life for me, and I just never opened my eyes to you know to see him, and I, I ran from him, and so I'm going to go back to to my first grade. My first grade uh, year, you know, I had lost my parents, and um, you know, I, I had lost my mom. She was a drug addict, and uh, you know, she she had put a dirty needle in her arm, and she she got AIDS, and uh, you know, I, I had a little brother, and and he he was. You know, he was born with AIDS, and he died at, at five months old. And my father committed suicide, and I believe he had, you know, he had had AIDS too. And uh, my my mom's mom was a alcoholic, and my grandfather lived in Mississippi, and he had come down there, and he had asked me, you know, if I wanted to come live with him, and I said yes, and uh, so I moved in with him, and you know, I I was uh. Yeah, I was six or seven. I was in first grade, and you know, I, I remember everything, and I, I remember seeing things, and you know, just the uh, being in the the places that I was in when I was a kid, you know, and then my grandfather had, you know, come and, and rescued me, and 
you know, and so my grandfather was just this amazing man. He was an amazing guy. And uh, he had got cancer in my fifth grade year. And, you know, so I, I uh, you know, I, I was spending a lot of time with him. He, we, we played checkers every night. I mean, it was a, it was a good time for me in my childhood. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, that's where I learned love from is, is my grandfather. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I was in, you know, I was six years old. It was my birthday, and my mom had, had went to, you know, give me a, a Game Boy for my birthday, and I wouldn't even kiss my own mother because, uh, you know, I, I didn't want whatever it was that she had, and I, I didn't understand then, you know. And so anyway, so I... I you know, my grandfather goes through, you know, 25 rounds of chemotherapy, and and he ends up, you know, passing away. I walk inside, and and I, I get home from, you know, that evening. It must have been seven o'clock or so, and um, he had remarried, so he was married to. I called her Gink, and she they had been married for 36 years, and uh, I walk in, and she's on the couch next to him, and. You know, I, I told her, I woke her up and I said, you know, I'll sleep on the couch and you can go, you know, get in bed. So she uh, she went and got in bed and the next morning, you know, my grandfather, you know, wakes up and he's lifting his arms up and down and, you know, his, his, he was leaving. He was, you know, on his way out and uh, he passed away. So after that, that point in my life, I was just, uh, I was devastated. There was nothing, <clears throat> there was nothing, you know, I, I just didn't care anymore I just I, man I, so I, I got into fighting and I got into drugs and you know just just this uh, big mess of, of nonsense I ended up living by myself my grandmother at that time she uh, you know she couldn't take care of herself they were married since she was 17 years old and she had went and moved into this you know with this guy they're actually still together which is awesome but you know uh the first time i met the guy he had a beer in his hand and you know they lived in a trailer and you know i, I it was just like a, a bad uh, it was a bad thing for me i didn't want no part of that and you know i refused to go live with him so she let me stay at the house by myself and i was in you know eighth grade by this time and you know so i lived by myself for man a good year you know she brought me groceries and you know stuff and I cut the grass I went to school I just I did whatever Nick wanted to do when Nick wanted to do it really and you know so it, it led up to a, a few things and so when I was a kid I man I I had lost my parents, I, I had lost everything, and you know, after my parents had, had passed away, I had cried out to God, I, and I didn't know God. I didn't uh, have a relationship with Him, I didn't know Him, but I, I, I called out to Him and I said, you know, and I would cry myself to sleep at night and just asking Him why, you know, I put the blame on Him and I asked Him why He had done this to me when I was a child, and I didn't, I, I just didn't understand. And so I went through this period in my life, you know, I went through, I wanted this, you know, I wanted this white picket fence, I wanted this family, I wanted, you know, just this, this uh, fantasy, I had this fantasy, well, uh, I went through, through a couple things when I was growing up, and, uh, you know, I, in ninth grade, uh, my uncle, and it's just, I got this, it's so, there's so much, but, I had I had this uncle and I ran away and I was in ninth grade it was my ninth grade summer I ran away and I had called a friend and I said you know I had asked her if, if his, her mom his mom would come and pick me up and you know she did so on the way on the way back she asked me you know if I wanted to come and live with them and you know, my first response was, no, I just want to get back to Ocean Springs. And then I, I got to thinking, you know, well, this is everything they have. I mean, it was just amazing. It was amazing. Uh, it was, a, you know, a two or three houses down from the beach. I mean, I had, man, just everything. I ended up saying yes. And, you know, I, I had everything that I had ever wanted when I was a child. Uh, you know, I had a, a family that loved me and, and just, uh, they gave me everything that I, I possibly wanted. And it wasn't enough. 
it, it wasn't enough. I chose to, you know, I chose to do other things and, you know, I ended up getting in some trouble and I got kicked out and, you know, I went down this, this just long road of, uh, you know, and I, I just real quick, I also want to say that, you know, regardless of everything that, that happened to me in my life, you know, I also chose to make some wrong decisions and do some, some just wrong things. And, uh, you know, so I, I went down this road of drugs and alcohol and women and just, you know, trying to fill this, this void I had inside of me that, you know, I mean, it was just, it was ridiculous. And although I've always had a, a good heart and a soft heart, I just, I, I never had something that, that fulfilled me, that, that took me. And, uh, you know, I, I thought that, I thought that, well, once I, I have a son, once, because man, I, I wanted, I've wanted a kid, you know, I wanted a family, something that was, that was whole. And uh, I, th I thought that, you know, once I had a baby boy or a girl, whatever the case was, that that it was gonna it was gonna fix me. It wasn't gonna um it wasn't gonna feel the way that I felt anymore. And that just wasn't the case. You know, I thought once I had a little boy, or you know, so, yeah, just because I do have a little boy, but once I had him, that I wasn't gonna want to do drugs anymore. I wasn't wanna, gonna want to do that those things anymore, and it just wasn't the case for me. And uh, you know, so I went down this long, long road, and you know, it, it was just—it's really crazy how some things work out, and that. I was I was 19 years old and I, I got sent I was on I was on probation and I got sent to uh, I got sent to rehab and it was this place called the City of Refuge and it's it's just so so wild how God has had His hand on me and I got saved in September. September 9th, 2008, and I, I got baptized then, but I didn't truly know, I didn't truly know the power of God. So, I left that place, and, you know, I did good for a little while, and this and that, but it wasn't enough. And I, I got ended up getting back into all the same things, and actually worse than I ever thought that that I would do. And uh, so I came to this point in my life where you know I, I just ran out of out of all options, and I I was just down to to nothing. And uh, I was humbled, and I, I didn't know, and I, I had been been man, God had been just tugging on my sleeve to go back to that place and I just kept running and running and I didn't want to face, I didn't want to face him yet. I still wanted to do what I wanted to do and he brought me to a place where there was just no, no other choice and, you know, I finally said, all right, I'm going to go. This is what I'm going to do and, you know, I went to the, the back to that same program and applied myself and, I gave, I, I knew what I needed and I, I, I knew that I needed to change my heart and that I needed him. And so I, I, I looked for him and I, I searched for him and I, I, I applied myself to finding him. And, and when he found me, I mean, he absolutely, uh, it's, just, it's just so amazing. So I, uh, I got to thinking and I was looking at some of my some of my old journals and stuff that I had wrote and you know I I looked at the dates on them and uh September 7th is when I got I got saved or I got baptized and uh I wrote the journal about it on the 9th and I graduated that program September 9th eight years later for a new beginning and uh... I mean he is, he is just so delivered me from I mean I have no desire none I don't smoke, I don't drink I mean I just don't I don't 
I, man, I, I wake up in the middle of the night and the first thoughts that come to my head is him. I mean, he talks to me and, and shows me things and it's just, uh, he has put a calling on me. That, man, it's not, it's not no longer about me. And it's about it's about other people, and it's about helping them. And you know, so he's placed me here, and he's placed me with with Joseph, and you know, to teach me and to to show me things, and and it's all for a purpose. And and you know, I used to, I was so caught up in my mess that you know, I looked at normal people. <laughs> And, you know, I, I wondered, you know, how do they do it every day? How do, because I was so caught up in drugs that, you know, I took, I took pain pills and just, just this big mess. And, you know, I, I, I thought to myself, man, if I could just have one every day, I, man, I won't need nothing else. There won't, there won't, I won't need anything else. And I looked at other people and I was like, well, how do they get through their day? I just don't even understand. I don't know. It w I just don't understand. I don't know how to get back to that point in my life. And uh, it was just. It's just. It's crazy. It's crazy. And when I say I, I truly have no desire. You know, and, and the pulling that he he had, he had just put on me, and it, it just blows me away. And uh, you know, I, I'm so thankful, not only you know for those seven years that I went through. You know, there was a reason reason for all that, and I I got to gain some experience and some knowledge in my life over those those years, and. You know, so I'm I'm so glad and I'm so thankful that I, I got to experience that and I got to get through it and I, I got to the other side of it. And you know, I started even thanking God for for man just everything that's happened to me in my life. I don't hold I don't hold any any case against him, I, I am so thankful. I'm so thankful just for even what, what happened with my parents. I, I'm so thankful that I got to come, I got to see and, and get through all that. And that, you know, I, I think about my life and I, I think about other people and how they, you know, just how he has had his hand on me because a lot of people don't make it through that. And and this isn't anything about me. It, it's about him and what what he's done for me. And you know, a lot of people end up in prison or just just they don't make it through that. And now I I have the chance and the the opportunity to to help people that that were like me and that were in my shoes. Because I can go back and I, I can I can step in theirs and you know show them that there's a there's a better a better way out and uh, so thank y'all for letting me let me share that. Yeah. That's uh, it, it, it kind of crazy. I mean, it's a, I mean, here it is. Nick loses his mom, you know, to AIDS. He loses his brother to AIDS, and then his dad, he kills himself. And then it ain't but a few years later, he's put, you know, or right at that time, he goes with his grandfather, who begins to impart into him, and then his grandfather's gone. And I told him, I said, Nick, you know, the, the Bible says that God is a father to the fatherless. And he's been having, God has been pulling on his life for a long time. And he's, you know, like us, went around the ringer. You know, and um, one thing is God brought him here for a reason. And, and I've been with him now for a while. So uh, you know when somebody has truly met the Lord. And, and I'll vouch for it that he has truly met Jesus Christ. 
on a personal level, not just a simple walk up the aisle, ask Jesus to come into your heart and, you know, has been baptized. No, this is a, this is someone who's truly met him, a true conversion that um, all they can think about. He asked me, he was riding home, he said, man, why do I get up in the night and the first thing I think about is him as soon as I wake up? I said, because you're consumed, man. It's because you're in love with him. You have a relationship with him and God is just, you know, um, is, uh, is revealing himself to you. And God has put him with me. So every day now, you know, um, you know, we just, Charlene just got him a new Hebrew Strong's Concordance. He just got a new Bible. And, you know, yesterday I'm teaching him now. God has brought him under my wing. And I'm teaching him now how to, you know, how to study. How to, uh, we're going down the road yesterday and I'm like, look, open your Bible up. I want you to read something to me. Read it out loud. You know, and he reads it to me and I, I tell him, all right, this is what I want you to do. You know, and I tell him what to do. And I said, now, I want you to go look it up, and then I want you to tell me what it means. This is we in a van all day long. So he's got to go in his Hebrew Strongs. He's got to go in his Bible. And, you know, a lot of people, I told him yesterday, as he was sitting down and he was reading, we was at the office. And um, a lot of people read the Bible for the wrong reason. And, you know, the reason we read our word is to look for Jesus. You know, so, you know, there's so much revelation that's being, you know, that's just hitting him. And he's like, oh my God, man, his, his mind is like, you know. But as he's reading, I'm like, look, you know, a lot of people read the word just to read it, whether, oh, I read my chapter, or I read my verse, or I did my little, you know, I read my little psalm, or this little book, you know, daily thing. And they think that's it, you know. And, you know, it's not it. Because what we are supposed to be doing is looking for Jesus. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So while Nick, I said, look, this, Nick, this is what I want you to do. And he's been with me now for a little while. So he's been in church a little while. He's, you know, seen the dots being connected and all of that. You know, I said, look, I want you to go back to Genesis. Right? So he goes to Genesis and he starts reading. But this time, he's not reading, you know, and read just coming through it. You know, now he's reading and he's like, yesterday he tells me, I found him. I said, you did? I, he said, yeah. He said, I found him in Genesis 126. I said, ah. He said, and God said, let us, that us there is Jesus, was in the beginning. Is that right? Is that right? And I'm like, that's exactly right. And um, so I said, but I'm going to tell you something. You did pass him up. <laughs> He's like, what? You know? I said, you did pass him up. And I said, but I ain't going to tell you. I mean, I can't help it, though. I'm like, no, okay. Go back to the beginning. So you see, there's a whole different way now that he's beginning to take the word in because now he's looking for Jesus and the Bible says that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek for him right and that's what he's commanded he's commanded us to do to look for him to seek for him you know seek and you'll find so um, we're gonna get into some worship um,